Mascarado is our lead official. He'll jump it up. Eric Curry and Tim Clockerty, the officials here in game number two. Keep your eyes on North Carolina State's defense early in the game. It's all about forcing turnovers. Baylor Shireman now has a new Creighton record. Make it 34 straight games with a three-point make. Way to get it out of the way from the first shot. First play. First possession. The transfer, he has been the highest impact newcomer for Creighton here this year. Transfer out of South Dakota State. First shot for Smith, he left it short. We will take shots from every part of the floor here today. And the law play and the first points for Ryan Colcrum. That's what happens when you shoot 71% from the field. <laughs> He's a high rated finisher inside and this matchup with Hulk Brennan and Burns is going to be one of the best two guys on. Yeah, I said keep an eye on him offensively. He misses his first shot. Average is just shy of 15 points per game, but he hustled back and Burns breaks it up. An offensive transition. Oh. NC State wants to play fast. They want to play with a little pace. Hey, they do, and what do you love about them? They do not turn the basketball over. Only nine and a half turnovers for a team that plays with so much pace. Look at Clark leaping out. Casey Clark goes high glass, but can't get it to fall. So Ryan Nemhard chases it down. Nemhard playing in his first NCAA tournament. Remember, he was injured last year. Again, the lob play to Kalkbrenner, and a foul committed, and Kalkbrenner will have two shots come in. And on that last North Carolina fast break, that's one of the things that Coach Kevin Keith talked about. They want to play fast because they don't want to have to go against Kalkbrenner in the half court consistently. They want to try to beat him up and down the floor and get some easy baskets when he's not around contesting shots at the basket. Now they're changing the call, and they're saying Kalkbrenner didn't quite have possession to make it a shooting foul. So now Creighton will take it from the baseline. Well, Creighton Blue Jays, they also play with a lot of pace as well. Both teams will get up and down. The key for the Wolfpack is uh, they're going to be able to guard in a half court with D.J. Burns. They're going to run him off multiple screen and rolls all over the place. Here's Trey Alexander. Hawked that time by Smith. Now he's got two fouls, guys. The leading scorer, Terquavion Smith, has two fouls. We haven't even played two minutes here in this game. We take a look at the advanced stats presented by Invesco QQQ. You look at the 40 deflections. That is a goal for the Wolfpack defensively every game. And Coach Keats, he didn't have a choice but to sub Smith out. It's, it's just too early. Yeah, for sure. We definitely can't let him pick up his third with two minutes in his game. You see how that shifts the Wolfpack here early in this game. That's a huge turn of events for NC State. And Hart turning the corner, and he again falls short in the fourth round. This is that time. Great close out by North Carolina State. Casey doing an ex excellent job of bothering that shot. It's our Cal Joyner, who averages 17, right below 17.1, right below Smith's average. at 17.5. Here's the big guy. Burns Jr. getting wrapped up by the Big East two-time defensive player of the year who draws a jump ball, but NC State will keep it on the baseline. And in this situation, you get to a point of no return. You're, n you're not going to score this ball over called burn burning. You have to pass that ball out, go play pick and roll. You got to move the big guy. Yeah, he has to get an angle. You just got not going to go through his chest, especially if you're playing on such a lot of Join the phase away. He had to put it up two seconds on the shot clock. And here come the Blue Jays. NC State opens up an 0 for 5 shooting performance. You see there the big story, though, to Quavion Smith with the two foul fouls. He's on the bench right now for the Wolfpack. Emhard kicks it over. Quick ball movement. Good ball movement. And here comes Alexander. He can't knock down the three-point shot. Creighton does it. 36% accuracy here this year from distance. Zach Clark back in the starting line, re-entered with the AC tunnel. And he plays that box out. It's been tough for Ems here for NC State to open up. Good push, and that's a wide open three. 
Maybe Shireman just has to have a record on the line for him to knock down that three-point shot. What's the next one, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> He's still over two since having that record break in. Three-pointer. How about an 0 for 8 start that for was, the Wolfpack? Yeah, that was a smart decision by Journey. He got inside against the big shot blocker. Nice kick out there. Didn't have to make some threes. And Shireman for two. He's got five points. 7-0 right now, and it's tough right now for North Carolina State. DJ Burns is going to be very active because on the defensive end, he has to play drop and pick and rolls, and he's giving them a disadvantage because of his not able to be able to play pick and roll. Oh, move. Jarkel Toyner gets NC State on the board. Nice job at using the rim. Reverse layup. They are keeping DJ Burns and pick and rolls. He's got to play this. Yeah, that's definitely something to watch with Creighton who has the ball. And Shireman walks with it. Well, Smith was at the table to check in as we check out for our first time out. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. We mentioned Turquavion Smith went to the scores table just before that timeout. He has now in, sat about two minutes. Here is the dynamic duo, why these two are so important, Smith and Joyner, one of four NCAA teams with two players with that many points, rebounds, and assists playing in the tournament. But Avery Johnson, you know, you got to go to the coach's decision, right? Is is would you? Is this a smart decision? Are you surprised by this decision to put Smith in this quickly? Well, because he's committed coming into this game, 78 fouls. Probably, independent of that shot, I probably would have sat him for about maybe two, three more minutes because they had scored. But again, Coach Kevin Keys, he knows his team. All right, when you talk about these coaches, Greg McDermott, maybe he would sit one. You know, Nimhart in this situation, but you got to know your team. You got to know the feel of the game, the floor of the game. So we'll see if it pays off for North Carolina State. About two plus minutes on the bench after picking up his second personal with 18 minutes and 15 seconds left to play. And let's check in with Andy Katz. As soon as he picked up that second foul and came to the bench, Kevin Keith turned right to Quavian Smith and said, be ready, T. Make sure he's going to be ready and set to come right back in. And I talked to Terquavian yesterday. A game like this, playing in the NCAA tournament, that is the main reason that he decided to come back to school. So for him to sit for quite a while in the first half, that would have been incredibly frustrating. But as we see, back on the floor. Yeah, Andy, he was projected by some last year to be a first-round projection. And the fadeaway falls for the first two for Trey Alexander. But see what happens? He didn't really want to fight through that screen, Smitty. You saw it? Yes. Because when you have two fouls, it makes you a little bit less aggressive on the defense. Well, let me speak from a player situation. Avery was both. I would be over to Avery. Let me back in, coach. Come on, man. Trust me. Because that's the one thing you want to do. You're always going to try to convince the coach. Yeah. Smith with a three-point attempt. I mentioned he can shoot it and will shoot it from almost any position after he crosses half court. Greg McDermott fully aware of that, both him and Smith and Joyner, so that they might pick him up about, you know, two to three steps off the three-point line. It's off again for Shireman. And you know Shireman can make shots, but I think in that situation, Smitty, getting a little bit closer to yeah, the Yeah, for sure, because he struggled shooting that one off balance. Didn't get his feet set a little bit out of his range on that shot. Alexander rolls his shoulder. Shireman from up top. Back to Alexander. And the rebound to Jack Clark. And Smith just blowing past everyone. Potty bucket and one. He is electric. I mean. The feel for the game, and you can see he's not going as fast as usual because he doesn't want to pick up a charge, staying under control, and finish as well. Coach Keats talked about they offered to Quavion Smith when he was 15, 15 years old. <laughs> his, his dad had to check back with Coach and say, is this for real? <laughs> but, you know, Kevin Keats talking to us about they saw something in Terquavion Smith that others did not. And to your point, Avery, the reason why they offered him at 15 years old, he stands at 6'4", he's listed at 6'4". At the time of his offer, he was only six feet. A little bit smaller in weight than what he is even now. 
But we believed in him when no one else did was the quote that Kevin Keats gave us yesterday. Kevin saw something. Boy, he had a good eye for scouting on that one at 15. Nemhart gets turned away. Five here to shoot. Ryan Nemhart has to pull on the trigger with four on the shot clock. Smith with the rebound. Look at the speed. He wants to go. And he can't go, but leaves it short. Should have kicked that one to an open joiner on the wing in that play. And now this is a situation where Creighton wants to throw the ball over the top to the big guy. A rare miss from that percentage for Ryan Colcran. Basically want to bait the defense into believing that the big guy's going to come out and set a pick and roll, and then he seals you underneath. Smith directing traffic. You see Joyner has rejoined him back in the backcourt. Smith with that body control. He's got another bucket. Six points now for Smith. Avery, he's fearless. <laughs> I mean, he looked right at Ryan and said, okay, big fella, go get this one. I'm going right into your chest. Trying to poke it away from Nemhart. He's got to be careful. He's playing with the two personals here defensively. Nemhart gets passed up. has gone cold from three after hitting their first one. They are now one for nine in this game. And North Carolina State's exceptional team at forcing turnovers. They were number one in their ACC. Well, I will say, a lot of people might say, what kind of shot is that? But we talked to Kevin Keats. He said, I give them free range, my guards. And basically, everybody on this team, as long as you play hard, you can take shots like that. It's like a dream for a player, isn't it? Good play. Dropping it off, Cole Brenner with the finish. He's got four points. And man, we should get a shot at Quavian Smith. Look at him, he's exhausted right now. The energy and emotions right now for him. Because we know he's not out of shape. Yeah, playing in his first NCAA tournament. A lot of these guys on the NC State side are. In fact, no one on this roster wearing a Wolfpack jersey has played in the NCAA tournament. They've done it at other schools. Again, looking for Kalkbrenner. And the foul against Ebenezer Dewana. Kalkbrenner leads the country. Field goal percentage, that's one reason why. The best Coke ever? Only one way to find out. Take a taste. It's an 11 to 8 advantage, Creighton over NC State. Andy Katz checked in with Creighton head coach Greg McDermott. Greg, last couple possessions, you've been able to get the ball inside to Ryan. How do you continue to exploit that inside? Well, we got to run. I, mean, you know, I think in transition is where there's a real opportunity to get it in there. And we've had some pretty good looks at threes that we didn't make, and it'll make it a lot easier to get it in there if we can start knocking a few of those down. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. 36% for the season, but just one for nine, 11% to begin with. And not taking it out. 25 seconds on the shot clock. Here comes the pick and roll. They'll spray at the floor. Nine seconds here to shoot Shireman. This is up the three-point shot, feeding Kalkbrenner on the post. Turns and faces. How about that hook shot? Oh, silky smooth inside. He's a right shoulder jump hook guy in the paint, but nice post pass by Sharon. That was beautiful. I mean, he got elevation, took his time. Not only does he dunk the basketball at a high percentage, that wasn't an easy hook at all. Thomas, LJ Thomas, his first points. This is a stretch where North Carolina State is playing without Turquavion Smith. You guys had mentioned he was gassed going into that last timeout. So these next few possessions without the region score. Kaluma trying to work for it and draws the first personal on DJ Burns Jr. So this was going into the timeout. As you can see, he's definitely gassed. Coach comes out there to see if he's okay, Avery. And he gets to the sideline. I think it's a combination, a little bit of the altitude, but also 
for him. He was so excited his first game when the NCAA picked up two fouls. Then he came back in the game, and he was present. And one of the things I tried to do, Smitty, and we talked about it before the game, when we played here in Denver, those first four or five minutes before the game, we ran some serious sprints up and down the floor. Loop around coverage of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, streaming device with Fast Break presented by Nissan and the March Madness live app. Scan the QR code now to download. It even started for me in the shoot around in the morning. I didn't want to just come out and shoot. I wanted to get up and down the floor just so I can get adjusted to this altitude. I, I sat down on the bench and rested over. We were totally different. <laughs> I was saying about it. I feel about you. That's because you're a shooter Meanwhile, store. Meanwhile, Avery's doing sprints in the hallway like in the hotel. Sprints and shoot around. Yeah, I don't I'm, understand that. I'm picking up 94 feet. Yeah, not me. <laughs> Here's Joyner initiating the offense here for the Wolfpack. Casey Morsell. The Virginia transfer steps back and drills it. Nice play by him. Good mid-range shot. You mentioned Marcel from, he has a NCAA tournament experience played at Virginia. And he's an ACC lifer, Virginia the state, NC State perhaps to finish. One and done opportunity there on that offensive possession for Creighton. Here comes Joyner, trying to find anything. Sit out to Clark. Oh, Brennan does a nice job of staying down. Ooh, this is an job. Area. Junior, though, still so tough to get it to find his first points. Goes for three after that possession. Kaluma drops it off to Kalkbrenner, count the bucket, and the second personal on DJ Burns. And you're talking about a guy in DJ Burns that led the ACC in fouls this year. 96 fouls. He was out of position, and once you get out of position and Kalkbrenner gets behind you, it's lights out. It is. He was late and definitely pushed him. He was asking the referee, what did he do? But it's obvious. <laughs> two hands in the chest. That's a foul. And you see his frustration. So two fouls for two starters. DJ Burns Jr. to Quavion Smith with the two. Quavion is back in this game. Nine points now for Colquitt. And unfortunately for... NC State, they've only forced two turnovers. They need more turnovers so that they can get out of transition. Would you guys agree? Well, I would agree. We highlighted, what, the 40 deflections, right? Defensively, but that's a goal for them every year. Part of deflections is forcing turnovers. First touch for Dewana, who's checked in in the place of Burns. Turns and fires. Ooh, he just swallowed him on that play defensively. Hands high, stayed up. That's the luxury Creighton has with such an outstanding defender. They don't have to double team. They can just play one-on-one -on, -one on everybody and stay home. About eight minutes to play here in this first half. Six-point advantage. Largest lead for Creighton has been seven. And it's Morsell who picked the pocket. There's it in. Defense to offense. That's what you're talking about. Well, you see that possession. DJ Burns has to play drop on the pick and roll, Lisa. Now with him out of the game, the bigs are up and they're pressuring no room to be able to penetrate. Good job by Ebenezer. They found it over the top, caught Renner, flushes it. And what a pass to set that up. That's the second time they've made that mistake. I'm not sure why they're fronting caught Renner. Because if you front him and there's no weak side help, that's, that's the easiest play that you can make. Talk to the Creighton assistants. They said Paul Brenner does an excellent job of creating passing lanes. And what he means by that, he gives his guards an angle. Doesn't just keep the big on his back. Well, Creighton now seven assists on eight made buckets and a 20 to 14 edge. And Keats. Kevin, you've subbed quite a bit here in the first 12 minutes. How much is it because of the pace and the altitude? I think it's more altitude. Um, we play fast all year long, but we knew coming into this game we were going to have to play at least 10 guys. Thank you. Thank you. That's something to keep an eye on, too. Creighton is, is not known to be a team that plays a lot of guys, Smitty. No, not at all. They usually go about five guys that play 29 plus minutes. And we will see how that plays out in this game. And there's another block oh, shot no, for Ryan. So here we see this situation with Kalkbrenner. 
The defender right here is out of position. There's nobody in, on the back side. There's no weak side help. When the corner is filled, you have to play behind Cobretta and put pressure on the ball, as you talked about, Smitty. That was our AT&T 5G take us above the rim for one of the best plays of the game. Trying to take advantage of Smith with his foul trouble. And Shireman backing him down. Offensive foul. Baylor Shireman now has two. Smart by Smith. Put a little pressure on Baylor at the beginning. Let's watch this. Being very aggressive right now, and then Baylor fell for it, put his shoulder down, and easy call for the ref. Yeah, that's what they're looking for is that initial contact by the offensive player to initiate that. So that was a set play to try to hopefully get Smith to pick up his third foul. They were trying to post him up. And it backfired. Baylor has two now. He right. picked up his second. <laughs> Side. Here's Joyner sitting on just the one bucket. Feeding to That spin move and draws the foul on Kalkbrenner. His first. Dewana did a nice job. That was a quick move. Ball on the floor, then spin, then going to his chest. And Cole Bunner, Burner, uh, kind of guessing which way he was going. Runner, though, he's got it. This was interesting. This stat 65 blocks to 53 fouls coming into today. And normally, you, you guys see that, right? As a shot blocker, it's it's also sometimes a foul maker, too, right? And, and he has more blocks than fouls, which is exactly what you see with a, a talented defensive player like that. And give him credit, you know, he never really puts himself in a bad position, he uses his length. You know, when you're 7'1", you know, when he raises his hands up, you know, it's like he's 7'6", seven, 7'7". Seven, seven. He's got a couple of blocks and the one foul here so far this afternoon. You know the one thing I love about Hulk Brandalisa? He, he doesn't have an identity crisis. He knows exactly who he is, and he plays consistently his game. He certainly got the eyes of the Ooh, look at that, he's sitting down. Uh -huh, uh -huh. This is phenomenal. Four seconds to shoot. And after all that, Ryan Nemhard comes out the victor. Ryan said, good job, Smitty, but better offense for me. <laughs> he told Ebenezer, hey, don't you know my nickname is R2, and I'm about to hit you with these two points. <laughs> R2 because there's two Ryans here on this team. Call for the There's Smith with a tough take. Challenging the Big East Defensive Player of the Year. He's got eight points. Ebenezer is doing a phenomenal job defensively. Oh, one of those Creighton subs. It's his first two. And North Carolina State didn't have a rotation on that one because they're scared of the short pass. Smith goes back to back, double figures now. He scores in bunches and quickly. Can't front him. And foul there on Tawana. And again, Avery trying to front top runner on that defensive possession. Go back to this offensive possession for NC State. Right in his chest and able to finish. That's what you call superior athleticism for a guy his size. And now, you know, Coach Keats is going to sub out a little offense defense here, get Smith out on this defensive possession and get him back in on offense. Ooh, just a rip away. That was a, that was a gimme that. Jack Clark. Trying to find joint. That is coaches loving players on the scout report because it was a deep post up for Ryan and Jack Clark played that play all the way. And a quick sub back, Turquavion Smith re enters this game. 50% shooting, 10 points. The rest of NC State, 4 of 14 with 10 points. Inside five minutes, Smith again. Boy, he's got that touch to go up and over called Brenner. The electric fire did come off with a good start, but boy, as Gravion Smith took over this basketball game so far. Nice little chess match here. And the Wolfpack fans, they've traveled well here to Denver. Clayton tosses it away. 
and a chance to tie or take the lead. And the biggest decision of the half right now, even with a two-point deficit, is with North Carolina State staff having enough confidence in Smith to bring him back in the game. Three turnovers, the last five possessions for the Blue Jays. You're, you're telling him right now, do not leave your feet for offensive of charge. Play this one smart. You know, I always say after him with just two fouls. Smith with that hesitation takes it inside. That time the floater won't fall. Creighton's got some numbers here. Numbers advantage with Smith. Late to pass to court. Alexander Short. Smith just has to make a decision. You know, he made the floater the last time. When he's going to find a big guy yeah, go, go, go. behind Cogbrenner for a lot. The same way Creighton finds their big guy. Oh, well, they're finding Cogbrenner. That would have been something to catch and convert that layup all in one motion. Hey, Joyner, hesitation, draws the foul on Nemhard. Nemhard did not like that one. He thought he got all ball. 24-22. As you can see, these two guys going at it. We got a good one going into the half. Well, the stats have been pretty even, which is why the score's pretty even. 24 to 22 as we look at our game summary. How about one combined three-pointer between these two teams? Creighton, that's part of their game, have missed their last 10 threes, but Turquavion Smith offensively has been the story, Smith. He's been dynamic. The floater right there, as you can see, they're playing drop covered. The quick euro step and the foul going through contact against the big fella. Playing off the defense because the defense is playing drop coverage, so they're getting over the screen and roll, taking away his three point shot, and he is just taking what the defense is giving him and knocking down floaters. John Carroll Joyner makes the first. He's a 23 year old grad student in his sixth year of transfer from Old Miss. Also played at Cal Bakersfield. And the first tie of the game. Here's the North Carolina State. 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press. And Hart breaks it. Feeding Mason Miller. He was a lefty. Can't get that one to drop. Mason Miller, of course, the, the son of Mike Miller. NBA fade away. Not there that time for Joyner. Here comes Alexander. To Farabella. Right now with the score 24-24, we'll see who can finish this last segment, this last four-minute segment of the half with two minutes and 50 seconds to go. Who can manufacture some easy buckets on the back door or a wide-open three-point shot? Alexander needed it, fades away, gets the two. Alexander, nice job, patient, driving it, didn't, didn't shoot the back door, but drove it back into the paint and been able to gather himself off two feet and knock that one down. This is all about half-court execution, defensively and offensively. What are you willing to live with defensively, and can you knock down with open shots offensively? Smith falling down, and Miller was defending that. He is hurt. As the play continues, but Mason Miller right. defended that, and now it's four on five, and Creighton has the four. And so Eric Curry, one of our officials, sees it immediately in an injury timeout as Mason Miller falls to the sideline. Looked like something happened with his right ankle. Yeah, look, he doesn't want to put weight on it. So as the closeout is happening, yep. yeah, oh gosh. Yep. We mentioned Creighton is not, is not a team that, that goes heavily deep into its bench. They've started to use Mason Miller a little bit more. He started to play more in February and March. And so far, he's out of the mix right now. And we'll see as the game moves on, Smith, if sometimes in situations like that, a referee's going to call a foul on that three-point shot. Possession has missed its last 10 three-point shots. Now three here to shoot. And Kaluma gets wrapped up by Joyner, his first. Yeah, he's hurt over there. You hate to see that. And his uncle, Ryan Miller, is on the coaching staff for Creighton. Mike Miller's brother. 
One of the things I love about what Coach McDermott said, he said with this team, he's always constantly and still in confidence. Coming up on the AT&T at the half scores highlights, the latest NCAA tournament news. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Three-point shot, you said it earlier, Lisa, is not a factor in this game for either team. 0 for 5 for NC State, 1 for 11 for the Blue Jays. Get to the free throw line. Both teams about even. This is a close one. Mm. Look at Mason Miller. Well, the good news, at least for him, is only a short amount of time before halftime where they can take a serious look at that back in the locker room. And a push off defensively on Nemhard, who has committed his second. In, in terms of half court as execution, most of North Carolina State's pick and rolls have involved Kalkbrenner. Maybe in the second half, we'll see other players setting the pick and roll, maybe forcing a switch on one of the perimeter defenders that are not, that's not as good defensively. Sharif Mitchell tips in for the first time. Smith turned on the corner. It's a great basketball play there for both teams. The ball sailed our way. Where were you guys? Lisa, you right-handed or left-handed? I'm clearly right-handed. Oh, I, I tried to catch that, it with my left that hand. That left hand was a little, 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 little At least I reacted. Little shaky. You guys just stood there and stared at it. Well, you know, that left hand. Got to work on that, Lisa. <laughs> That was a high school coach, too, so I'm sure he loves hearing that. Look on your left hand, Lisa. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Four point edge here for Great. It's all right, Lisa's coaching now. Thank you. Yeah, coaching us. <laughs> <laughs> Five here to shoot for Alexander. Inside a minute, now three to shoot. Trey Alexander, a deep three. Excellent defensive possession by the Wolfpack. Nowhere to go for Great. We missed the last 11 three-point attempt. Smith falls up from mid-range. He's got 14. And you know what I love, Smitty? Two-for-one situation. Yeah, he did. Nice job. And he has a total package, Smith. Hasn't knocked down a lot of threes, but he has floaters. He also has a mid-range game. Wolf back within two. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. You know, two things stick out to me right now. Unfortunately, in this situation, Mason Miller, they're wheeling him off. Looked like it was a right ankle injury. Feel bad for that young man. Yeah, we wish him our best, of course. But two things that stand out, North Carolina State has eight points off of uh, Creighton's turnovers. Creighton has, they haven't created any points off turnovers. Nimhart flips it over to Kaluma, thought about the three-point shot. Fires. Now 12 straight misses from distance for Creighton. And shot clock not in play going into this possession as Joyner controls. This will be an isolation for Joyner. No pick and roll. Trying to cross over Farabello. Left it short. Had a good look at it. Yes, he did. I, I think, you know, Kevin Keats was trying to tell him, drive it downhill. He wanted to get back to a step back. Probably needed him to challenge a little bit more. But if you're the Wolfpack, you're excited. You didn't start off this game great, and you're only down two. And the Cats is standing by with Kevin Keats. Well, Kevin, how did you best survive that 7-0 deficit? Well, I thought we started defending. When you look at the way we started the game, we didn't fin defend very well. And then we got to Quavion Smith and some ball screens, and he was able to make some plays. How would you judge the way you managed to Quavion Smith playing with two fouls? Well, we're lucky. We got out of here with two fouls. We subbed him in offensive and defensively. We just got to pick our intensity up. Okay, we're letting too many ball reversals. Uh, they're throwing the ball over the top to the big guy. We got to get to help side. We got to have more ball pressure. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. All right, we're back. It's halftime, 28 to 26. Creighton over NC State. Taking a look at your first half stats, we heard the folks at halftime, Candace Parker, addressing the zero assists for NC State. 
Not something that you see too often after one half complete of college basketball. Let's check in with Andy Katz, who spoke to Greg McDermott. Well, and Greg just told me, look, they've got to get back to dictating more pace. They did a much better job early in the first half with transition, with ball movement. He said there was too much dribbling later in the first half. As for defensively, look, he said to Quavian Smith, made some good shots. They've got to continue to make him to try to take tough twos here at the beginning of the second. He's seven to 15, Andy, from the field. Uh, hasn't made a three-point shot in the first half. And that assist note in the first half, so the first team since 2018 with no assists in the first half, that was a Syracuse game against some team named Michigan State. <laughs> Boy, that lockdown defense of the Spartans. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> Frank gets the first possession of the second half. Colt Brenner flushes it. Good job at Greg McDermott out of the half with a beautiful play for the first possession to get a high percentage shot. Very high percentage <laughs> shot. A lot of times in that situation, the big will pin down and the guard will zip her up to the top. That time, Colt Brenner got a nice little back screen from his team. Okay, so this is also the matchup to watch. Colt Brenner deflects it out of the hands of DJ Burns. Remember, he had to sit the last eight minutes, really, of the, the half after he picked up two fouls. Shireman, yep, a great pass. Joyner, Joyner, the body shifts and gets it to drop. And a huge key for North Carolina State. They got to get somebody else in double figures to join Smith in terms of the scoring. They're not going to be able to survive with one guy in double figures. I agree. I agree. 14 points is the team high as we check in with Andy Katz once again. And I have an update on Miller. No break. It is a sprained ankle. And Greg McDermott telling me right before half that he is done for the game. Okay, Mason Miller, who is a sub off of Creighton's bench, injured himself. It looked like he twisted up right, that, yeah, but right ankle in a closeout situation. On a three point hey, shot. Hey, Here comes Smith. He's 0 for 4 from 3. Featherway, lots of soft touch. A feathery touch there from Morcel. He's got 6. And we know Smith is capable. Quavion Smith, he was the first freshman to lead the ACC and made threes, 96 of them, since J.J. Redick in 2003. Both of them, right? Can shoot it. Yeah, but that number is mind-boggling. 96, Sherman misses. Sherman's not getting set. I think also all these players are floating on their jump shots, and you said they need another player to score. It will be Joyner for the Wolfpack. Nemhart dives for the ball and tries to recover defensively. Here's Marcel for three, makes the tackle. He's had a solid game on both ends. Shooting a high percentage, defending well. First lead of the game for NC State here today. And guess what? It was the first assist of the game, too, for NC State. Ooh, the big fellas are banging down there. Just watch it. DJ Dallas pick up his third. Stay straight. Oh, oh tried the tip dunk. And the, the speed of Joyner on the push. It's Shireman who got him from behind. A little chase down block for Baylor. Yeah, nice job by Shireman in transition. Blocks it with his strong hand, his left hand. Look at Shireman. Says, I can come from behind and block shots just like somebody named Pete James. <laughs> <laughs> well, the coaching staff of the Blue Jays have to love that you want to transition. Get all guys to the level of the basketball. Shireman worked on that play. Luke Smith for two. What a move, a 9 nothing run. Shireman again, and Creighton, one for 15 from three. Snake the pick and roll, Smith, and then his ability, with a slight appeal to be able to absorb contact and play through it. A little pick, re-pick here. It's fun to watch, drops it off to Burns, who gets the two. This is where you got to get DJ Burns the basketball, on an angle where he can go at. Oh. Oh. 
scores his first points here today. Nemhart fades away. And you notice that situation. Coach McDermott acted like he wanted a timeout. He did. But Nemhart, they probably have some signals where he basically calls like a fake timeout, but Nemhart knew to continue driving the basketball. Excellent. And the rebound to Kalkbrenner. Greg McDermott wants him to push. Alexander, shovel pass. Boy, one for 16. DJ Burns had that one at angle. Gave a little extra shove, and Kevin Keats is not happy about that one. <laughs> he, he came outside the box. He was almost at half court. But let's see if, if Burns extends his right forearm on that play. Well, he's definitely surprised by the call, and he's got three personals, so he will take a seat. With 16 minutes and nine seconds left to play. They and another foul, Dewana. That's his third. So you've got your starting center, DJ Burns, with three personals, and now your backup, Ebenezer Dewana, with three. Yeah, we were talking about how guards need to stay connected to wing players on staggered screens. Same thing in that situation. Lost Coke Burner's body, and nice read by the inbounder throwing the ball over the top. Stat line and two blocks for today as well. Follow Highlighter for everything you need to see her do in sports and culture. Scan the QR code now and don't miss another moment. Well, he's struggling right now, six for nine. <laughs> from the field. We used to <laughs> 71%. <laughs> well, he's struggling. <laughs> Tough shooting night for Colorado. <laughs> The crowd is in this one. It's starting to get a little life. It's a game of cycles. We know this. The ebbs and flows of a game. If you're up, you can't be too excited. If you're down, you got to handle adversity and play through it. Smith again looking for his. Rebound to Tawana. Morceau left side. Morceau sneaks his way in. Tawana was fighting for the rebound. He got a foul call. And Tawana got to clarify it. He may have, he picked up his fourth. NC State in some foul trouble as we take a timeout. I'm Adam Zucker with the Wendy's Game Break, UConn and Iona squaring off in Albany, UConn, 5 of 11 from three. Naheem Aline leaning into one there. They're up by four right now on TBS as we go back to Lisa, Avery, Smitty, and Andy. Yeah, the South region in our tournament summary was something to watch here yesterday. Smitty, I'm not talking about the Michigan State game yet. Keep talking. I was talking about ahead. the upsets, Princeton upsetting Arizona, Furman upsetting Virginia. <laughs> oh, and yes, Michigan State won today. <laughs> Are you done? No, not yet. <laughs> We're green. Oh, my bad. We can't, we can't read. We, I'm sorry. A Avery, you're sitting next How to was your handwriting? Right, what was your handwriting at Michigan State? Obviously, you write like a doctor. Fantastic. <laughs> I am a doctor. <laughs> an doctor's He's degree a shot Michigan doctor. State. DJ Burns has checked back in here for NC State coming out of that timeout. Here's that little back pick again. Seven seconds on the clock. We have four to shoot now. Nemhard pulls and fires. 16 straight misses from three. Is just unheard of for a great team that shoots 36% for the season. Box out. Yeah. The small's down there battling. To Alexander. And they're having that much trouble shooting. The Leading field goal shooter. Yeah, that's his sixth three of the year. Big fella. Obviously, that's that's not his area of expertise, but he went to his toolbox on that one. He's got his teams back. <laughs> he knocked his, that one down. His, his sixth three-point make of the season. A seven-nothing run. Looking back at it. Let's watch this one, Avery. What is he? A stretch five? Okay, now? leave it up there. Why and follow through? Talk to him. He's ready for a celebration too. I mean, this building exploded on the Creighton side. 
half of their team was the bench players were almost on the floor. The top hit at 37. Smith with the lean at Burns. Pushed off. He's got four. Wow. Tawana with four. Now Burns with four. Got to be careful. Yeah, he's got to be careful. We know that was a questionable call on his third foul, but I don't believe that this one was questionable. That's a push off. No, oh, come on, Avery. You kidding? Wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 Avery, is, wait a second. Wait, this is the college basketball. Oh, okay. This is freedom of movement. And, mm, that was just a little touch. Yeah, we need to get Gene in here. No, Gene, talk about Gene, that. Gene can't help you with that one. He needs to help you with that one. <laughs> Draws the foul. And he's got two free throws coming. And the foul trouble. And Smith has done a great job of, of not picking up a foul. Those two fouls that he got came in the first, you know, one minute and 45 seconds of this game. I want to ask you guys, sometimes with DJ Burns, because he's committed 96 fouls coming into this game. Yes. Could that be more of a reputation foul? Or it doesn't count. You, you wipe the sl slate. No, clean. I think these referees wipe the slate. They just call the game on the floor. Yeah. I mean, whether we agree or not on some of the uh, fouls, I, I just think, you know, these referees are too good to even look at that. Yeah, I agree. 20 points now for Colt Brenner. Here's a double screen away right here for Smith. With two defenders hawking him. Draws the foul on Trey Alexander, his second. We'll tune in to Inside March Madness and check out the play of the day presented by Buick Encore GX. Smith, 14 points in the first half, two points so far here in the second. And he hasn't gotten the scoring support to your point earlier, Avery. And he slowed down in his scoring here in the second half. Well, they only have 38 points. <laughs> yeah, did I jinx that at the beginning when I said we were expecting a high scoring game, but it might be 50 to 45? You got 17 out of 38. You rolling. <laughs> That's okay, Lisa. At this point, it may be 62 58. Alexander taking the pace line. The NC State defense, Clark with the rebound. Tension rising here a little bit. 13 minutes and some change left to play. Joiner stepping the move is pure. And that Joiner is working his mid range game. Yes, he is. You take the shot block, completely out of play. Kalima leads it. Jump hook. I like that play from Paloma. Took his time. You can see the other big from the wolf that could come off Ryan's body. Gave him a clean look. Arthur Kaluma averages just under 12 points per game. That's his first field goal. All four points from the free throw line before that bucket. Last year, not this year, but last year is Biggie. Made all Biggie's honorable mention. The all freshman team, excuse me. Shireman has picked up his third personal. Watch this play. Patience. Jump over it. Nice hook shot. I like that play. They might need to go to that a little bit more. Baylor Shireman has three personal fouls, sending Turquavion Smith to the free throw line. Hey, the best coke ever? Only one way to find out. Take a taste. Turquavion Smith. Was he considered at, at one point a major prospect coming out of Farmville Central High School? He received offers from High Point, East Carolina, NC State. He mentioned that his first offer was as a 15 year old by the Wolfpack by Kevin Keats. And this kind of performance playing in his first NCAA tournament, 19 points, is one of the reasons why they saw something in him at a young age. North Carolina State trying to get into their trapping game. Take some time off the clock, maybe. Create a turnover. Just trying to disrupt so they can't get in that half-court set to throw it down low. 
to call Brenner. Trying to junk up the defense. Casey Morcell had picked up the foul. So it's Creighton taking it out. Shot clock resets to 20. Farabello trying to take a peek inside to call Brenner. Nice job by North Carolina State. Except for a and that was it, taking it to the rack. Yeah, they did a much better job on Kalkbrenner inside, but he's such a force. That was like an assist for the big fella because the defense refused to rotate. A turnover forced, Creighton on the move. I love what Arthur did, pump, fake the pass. And look at the drive by him. Kaluma with the finger roll finish. Under control. This game going back and forth. Now Creighton with a three-point lead. We'll see if North Carolina State and their best player to Quavion Smith, if he can score here. Smith hesitation, oh. pulls, fires, hits. He's got 21. The 12th 20-point game for him this year. He's telling the referee I got pushed. Arthur Coloma is playing the game right now. Kaufbrenner's at 22 points, his eighth 20 point game of the year. And Kaluma corrals. And a reach in foul. Brenner does it all. Creighton goes as Colt Brenner goes. It's all good here so far. Want to watch the next game with your friends? Just tell Siri. Text Sam. Next round, my place. Well, you know March Madness is a lot of emotion. Let's watch Smith right here. Freeze it all. Power A. Did he think about it, Smith? He thought about it. Let's go roll it. Didn't do it. Keeps going. He's controlling himself. He got a little claps. Uh-oh, freezer right here. Chair, you're in trouble. Chair is in trouble. Be careful, young fella. Watch your hand. That's the hand you shoot with. Yeah, hit it with softly with your left hand. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> little passion. Don't hit it at all. Just talk. A little passion. Yeah. If you're going to hit something, hit something with a pad on it. Like yes. a chair. Well, I didn't do the power either. That would have just... Mm, that would have been messy. Oh, yeah. And I know both coaches are saying, can we hit some threes? Both teams are shooting 11% from the three-point line. That's not good, is it? Not at all. Kaluma providing the soft touch. He's six for six from the foul line. He's had a nice second half. Ten points in the game for Arthur Kaluma. NC State's got to find some answers here, now trailing by five. Traquavion Smith seeing all kinds of numbers. Creighton takes it away. Nemhard leading the break, takes it himself. The tip, Alexander, is going to be called for offensive goal interference. Let me say, Joyner did an unbelievable job. Yeah. A two-on-one break. He played that extremely well, Avery. Watch, played in, in between and then went up without fouling. Nemhard was in between whether he wanted to pass or the score. And sometimes, you know, you've been in that situation, Smitty, if the defender converges on you, that may be the one time a coach wouldn't mind a little simple behind the back pass. Just a little muster. Also, take up the space. If you're going to try to lay it, you got to go to his body. Turner spins and fires. I think he saw the basket for half a second before making that shot. He's got 10. And now North Carolina State has somebody joining the party. He has Jerners joining the party. He has 10 points. Feeding Kalkbrenner. Look at those hands. The pass, the catch, the finish. I know fans out there would say, uh, why is he fronting? No, it is. Ryan is doing an excellent job of creating that angle. He's tied a career high now with 24 points. Also picked that up in the second game of the season against North Dakota. Now 10 now to shoot. Morceau. And Farabello whistled for the reach in his first. Well, that was an easy call. Grabbed him around the waist. Let's check in with Andy. All right, so I'm holding up right now Boost Oxygen. That is the product that they use here to give them a little oxygen during timeouts. 
Speaking of the NC State staff, they did nitrates and beet juice prior to coming to Denver, but during the timeouts, they have been using this boost oxygen to give them a little lift because they've been very concerned about this altitude. The secret to success, beet juice and nitrates. There's Alexander, soft touch. The rims are now friendly for Creighton. Nice coast-to-coast -coast drive. Keeps putting pressure on North Carolina State's defense. Finishing in traffic. Outstanding move. Jordan from midway. He can't get it, but a big offensive rebound. Marcel challenging Kalkbrenner. Marcel has done nice work playing off the basketball, creating an offensive rebound and lane for himself. Farabello with the foul, his second. He'll get checked out, and Shireman will check back in. And as Andy reported, no Mason Miller off the bench anymore for this game, at least. The right ankle injury for Creighton. Colt Brenner will have a breather. And even though Burns has four fouls, Smitty, you talked about in situations like this, when Colt Bur Brenner's off the floor, maybe this is a good time to bring him back in against the backups. Totally right. He's trying to recreate his own. He's trying to do exactly that. Hands draws the foul just enough against Ryan Nemhard for his third personal. Avery, I'm going to have you read this poem. Ooh. One word can change everything. Shazam! Fury of the gods. Now playing only in theaters. Rated PG-13. Get tickets now. Now you know why I was going to have you read that promo. <laughs> to hear you say the word Shazam. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. DJ Burns Don't. still on the bench. Four personal fouls here for NC State. Don't get jealous. Man. I'm not. Your time is coming. We've got a long day ahead of us. Ooh, Avery Johnson next year, play by play. Or professional promo leader. Pressure coming here from the Wolfpack. And again, Nemhard handles that, bringing it up. Cool, calm, and collected as the point guard. Playing in his first NCAA tournament here today. He's injured at the end of, of last season. Never got an opportunity to play in last year's tournament. Alexander getting wrapped up by Marcel, but a little too much contact. He has three personals now. Both teams the rest of the way are sh shooting free throws. Mm -hmm. DJ Burns Jr. checking back in. Oh, you look at McDermott. And, yep, <laughs> yep. You're going to put your big match. man in? I'm going to put my big man in. Because DJ Burns most likely against everybody else on that front line of the Blue Jays will score the basketball. And McDermott is saying, no, no way. I want to give them an advantage with him being able to score. And just two outstanding coaches. Coach uh, McDermott has now led uh, Creighton to eight straight 20-win seasons. And two head coaches, Kevin Keats on the left in his fourth NCAA tournament, two at NC State, two at UNC Wilmington. And Greg McDermott, all kinds of success at Creighton as a program, their 24th appearance this year. And Coach Keats talked about his assistant coaches. He was raving all about those guys. He said he only hires future head coaches, not assistant coaches. I thought that was pretty interesting. And he got that advice from Rick Pitino, one of his mentors. High off the glass there for Joyner, and Farabello chases it down. Alexander slow to cross mid-court. Three on two here. And Joyner pulls from distance. Tough for the Wolfpack. It's a new way to run a three on two. Run to the line, the three-point line. They keep checking on Trey Alexander. That was Tim Clockerty who, who came over to make sure he was okay. He's having trouble catching his breath. that works. I think North Carolina State needs to time out here. They've got three remaining if they want to use it. Creighton's got three as well. Kaluma, a monstrous block. 
Boy, did he cover up space on that one. Blue Jays on the transition, working it around to Alexander. Into the paint, he goes, flips it up there. Boy, they had a nice little rhythm three for Farabello in the left corner. He just missed him on that break. And a timeout call. They'll use one of the three they have left. They've got two remaining. Now NC State does. Smitty, you like this? I like that one. Go get it off the glass and get out. Give me that. Your voice is cracking. A little bit. <laughs> NC State called the timeout and headed into the huddle. Emotions were high. Yeah, this is a situation where Coach uh, Keats talked about Jaquel Joyner. He's more of the big brother type to, to Quavion Smith. Said Joyner has a great personality, but things can get a little intense. Those guys love each other. They've been great teammates all year. And the two feeding each other. How about that? Coming out of the timeout. They made up just like that. They didn't necessarily kiss and made up, but they made up. <laughs> a, a kiss tickling the twine, if you will. The third assist of this game, by the way, and Smith's 24th point. Mm -hmm. I love that you said older brother, though, Avery, because that's exactly what Kevin Keats said Darko Joyner is to Smith. And the addition of bringing him over from Old Miss this year. This is... Three now to shoot. Oh, 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 oh. Lefty. Loose ball, brilliantly done. Jack Clark tapping it to keep it in play for NC State. Here comes Smith. He's going to get the bucket, not that time. Burns with the offensive rebound. He can't get the putback. Wolfpack out of the Jack Clark, the big defensive play, and then sinks the big three point shot to cut it to three. Yeah, Smitty and I were over here talking that we wanted the big fella to kick the ball out initially. That play made by Casey on that one-on-one -on -one defense to allow that possession. This place is jumping. <laughs> TBS is proud to be the only network that can bring you all new episodes of American Dad. The new season premieres Monday, March 27th. Only on TBS. Some youngsters and their families here taking in this one. Got the Sags fans here early. Gonzaga plays later today. Our game summary, a three-point edge here for Creighton. Ryan Kalkbrenner, you see there, a career high now with 26 points. And the three-point shooting still is not there for either one of these teams. But NC State has made their last two three-point uh, attempts. Totally right, Lisa. Combined, they're five for 30. So the three-point shot has not been a factor in this game thus far. Yeah, you got to be very surgical on where you want this ball to go every possession down the stretch. Hulk Brenner kicks it out to Nemhard. He's got seven seconds to work with on the shot clock. Takes that one way in and lays it in. Nice job by Nemhard. Not settling for a three-point shot. Attack the basket, finish. He's got to continue to be aggressive, especially in this last stretch of the game. Five minutes to play. Smith has 24 points. At some point, Burns is going to have to roll to the basket. Oh, 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 oh my goodness! The highlight of the day! Turquavion Smith brought the house down. Maybe that motivational speech that Jordan gave him during that timeout has inspired him. What a talent. What a block, what a dunk. Let's get some excitement so far right now in Denver. This is good. I guess when you're a projected first round pick in the NBA, you make those type of plays. Shireman from the wing. And Clayton is 2 of 19 from 3, but gets another opportunity. Then Mark did, did think about it, decides differently. Well, you just don't want to give up any second shots in this situation. And he lays it in. So a couple of big right-handed layups by Nemhard, their sophomore point guard.
Smith again to challenge the call credit. He cannot be stopped. He's got 28. For somebody that's 165 pounds, Smitty. Yes, but he understands angles. Yeah. And he is playing at a high level. They got to get a stop right here. He's basically reeling his team. Paul Krenner, that was just muscling that through Burns. And Great he play. works on his career high. He's got 28. A little back screen for Ryan. And then, uh oh, here's Smith down the lane. This could be maybe looked at. And he's holding that left ankle. We're going to take a media timeout. 62 to 57, your score. The officials in that break did go to the monitor to look at the, the last personal foul on Ryan Kalkbrenner, and they determined that this was a common foul and didn't upgrade it. Yeah, they said it's a common foul because he made a play on the basketball. That's the key right there, making a play on the basketball. Now remember to upgrade to a flagrant one. The officials have to deem it as excessive or mm -hmm. unnecessary and not a legitimate attempt to play the ball in that situation. Larry Scarato, Eric Curry. Tim Clockerty, the officials working game number two for us in Denver, Colorado. And we said keep an eye on this backcourt with Smith and Joyner. And now 40 combined points between them. It's 29 here for Smith. Smith's been pretty good at least after he went to the principal's office. Yeah. But tell me how good. <laughs> That's nine points as Jordan and his teammate yelled at him <laughs> or had a little bit of a tough conversation. And that's the response you want to see from teammates. A 30-point game now for Smith, his fourth 30-point game of the year. Mm -hmm. Big possession right here on both ends, offensively and defensively. Two and a half here to play. Call play. Oh, keeping it in play by Jack Clark. Just stepped on the sideline. They'll give it back to Creighton, but he has nearly made a, a second great defensive play. Remember, he had the, the tip in to keep it in play and win possession by NC State before he hit a three-point shot. Smitty, you were talking about Clark, 6'8", a lot of length on the perimeter. He can switch, and now there's five seconds on the shot clock for Creighton. They find Kochbrenner, who immediately finds Shireman. Shireman fading away. What? Time to hit your second three-point make of the game. Love the play. Throw it over the top to Ryan and then set a flare screen or side screen. And Baylor knocks that one down. And Shireman or Alexander. Yeah, Kalkbrenner. So, so here's a big move. Third personal. Here's the big move. They're using the big guy here as the passer. They know they can throw it over the top to Kalkbrenner. North Carolina State was probably expecting him to post up in the paint. Clutch shot by him and a clutch assist by Kalkbrenner, right? To recognize it. And Lisa, Kalkbrenner has made a three. He has. Got an assist on that last play. Yes. Pretty impressive. Two minutes and eight seconds left. And Smith with 31. His Five season high is 33. His career high is 34. Interesting right now. Going to their 1 2 2. Low pressure. Just taking off some clock. Yeah, that's, that's smart on Creighton's side. And Hart takes a peek. He's got 12 seconds. Over to Kalkbrenner. Hart fake, draws the foul. Couldn't get the bucket to come with it. And Kalkbrenner, a 77% free throw shooter. Have some coming. <laughs> it's just difficult. I'm watching all the defenders for the Wolfpack to try to stay behind, but he he just creates that angle with his shoulder and also the movement of the basketball because the guy was playing around in a good position. When they skipped it over the top, they did not, he did not let him get back around. What do you make of, of Ryan Culprunner today? Oh, he's been a man amongst boys. 
talked about him coming into the game shooting 71 percent from the field but not from the three-point line that was a six three-point main shot of the year his defense is going up 30 points in this game guys we've got a couple of 30-point scores pop runner for creighton and smith for nc state and we got a whistle down on the near side that is tim clockerty Talking about Larry Scarotto. It's also amazing. He shoots 70% from the field, but also has a big 70 from the free throw line. And today he's 7 for 7 from the free throw line. 11 for 14 from the field. All right, so NC State will take it off from the sideline. Smith has been a broken yeah. It's tips and blocked by Alexander. And as much as we gave give credit to Jack Clark for North Carolina State, Trey Alexander, he's been really exceptional in the latter part of this second half defensively. Six blocks for Creighton as a team. And hard more than content to dribble out some time once again on this possession. Barking out instructions. Shireman. to seal the deal for the Blue Jays. Back the other way, he stepped on the sideline. KC Morsell turned it over. And a timeout call by NC State. Wow, tough break for NC State, ooh. Wolfpack running out of time. Sixty-nine to sixty-one. A minute and two seconds left to play. Now remember, unfortunately, Casey Morsell had stepped out of bounds, and then seconds after that call, so it's Creighton basketball from the sideline. Seconds after that, it was NC State that called the timeout. They've got one remaining here with a minute and a few seconds left. Creighton caught a break there because after. They made that three. They were celebrating a little bit and didn't get back in transition. You're absolutely right, Avery. We've seen this pressure coming. Creighton has so far been able to handle it. Alexander out to Nemhart. And stops the clock with 53.5. And unfortunately on yesterday, we saw what pressure can do in a situation when you get tied up in a press in that Virginia game. Still a lot of seconds left. Comes down to making free throws. Creighton has been good at the foul line as a team. 15 of 16 from the foul line, as poorly as they've shot the team. Three of 20 from three-point territory, a stark contrast. And Nimhard's 86% from the line. That's exactly who you want at the charity strike. Largest lead of the game now for Creighton. Joiner on the left side, and NC State will call its final timeout. So we'll take a timeout. Ten point edge for the Blue Jays. Time now for the thrilling drives presented by Nissan. A couple of big ones in the second half by Ryan Nemhart. Yes, Lisa, watch this little hesitation. You can see DJ Barnes went back because he was scared of the lob to Ryan, and Nemhart took advantage. Lay that one up, and that was a big layup for the Blue Jays. We talked about it in our production meeting. We thought Nimhart would at least have to get into double figures to provide some scoring punch and help for his team. A lot of credit to Baylor. Shireman, he's knocked down some big buckets in this second half. Cockrunner thought about it. And hangs on to it as Joyner is forced to foul him. Now with 35.7 seconds left. It's the 10th team foul here for NC State. So the double bonus now for Colt Brenner and Creighton. Hey, Avery, I'm going to ask you a question. I always like guys on the, on the free throw line. I never like when you took them all off. Yeah. Visually, it just 
took, took something away. And then sometimes with coaches, they think it's easier for their team to get matched up if they're not on the line, especially if it's a miss free throw. Oh! Joyner pulls up and fires. And Shireman with a big rebound. Creighton fans can feel it now. Well, I'm glad Nimhart was okay on that big on that screen from Burns. He's holding his neck a little bit. Yeah. What a hard-fought basketball game that we saw today. Two elite scorers. And Creighton does just enough and finds a way to advance to play Baylor in the round of 32. 72 to 63, the final over NC State. And I agree with you, Lisa. Uh, Smitty, this was a hard-fought win for Creighton. North Carolina State didn't really go away until late in this game. So give Creighton credit, they. They played tough, especially in the second half by outscoring North Carolina State by seven points. Let me tell you about Ryan Kalkbrenner. He had a career high, 31 points. He also set a school record for points in a tournament game for Creighton. Did a little bit of everything. Even was, as you mentioned, one for one from three-point territory. <laughs> by the way, that's his sixth three-point make of the season and his 18th three-point attempt. Add to it his rebounding tally and his couple of blocks. And Andy Katz is standing by with Greg McDermott. All right, thank you, Lisa. Well, Greg, this one uh, certainly almost went the distance. At the end, Baylor Shineman with some clinching threes. That's why, exactly why you got him. How do you explain the way you guys were able to keep NC State off right at the end? Well, we kept him off the three-point line for the most part. But, man, Smith is so hard to guard. But you know, I've been telling Baylor all year he's going to make a couple big ones when we need him. And, uh, we hadn't ran that out of bounds play all year long. We executed it to perfection, and obviously he knocked out a big shot. Uh, the player to your left, he has been your absolute workhorse, was injured at one point this season. What has he meant to you in this program, especially this season? He makes me a hell of a coach, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, he's so good on both ends of the floor, and he's humble, and he, he, you know, he appreciates the game, he respects the game, he plays it the right way. And we got him in some foul trouble because they were trying to, you know, front him and get, get to the high side. And, we were able to take advantage of that small lineup, and when we got it into him, he finished for us. You got Baylor next. How do you beat him? Uh, I'll worry about that when I get to the film room. I'm going to enjoy this one for a second. Thanks, Greg. Let's bring in Ryan. Let's go, Brady! Ryan, this has been quite a season. This was the expectation. You guys were picked to win the Big East. You expected to be at this point. It wasn't a straight line to get here. How did you guys get to this point? I mean, definitely a lot of ups and downs, like you said, but I don't think the belief in this team wavered within the locker room at all. I mean, we had that short little six-game losing streak. We still thought we can get our stuff together and be right here, and now we're putting ourselves in a great opportunity to be where we wanted to be at the beginning of the season. It wasn't as smooth as we wanted it to be, but hey, as long as it ends the same. How did you guys put yourselves in position to win this one? It's being locked in and practice leading up to it. Yeah, call uh, just we practiced four days leading up to it, just being locked in and having good prep, as it is with every game. You know, there's a really, really good team over there, and just got to lock in and do what we do. Thanks, Ryan. We'll see you Sunday. Thank you, guys.